major reasons why I applied. I felt that Maricopa County was unfairly attacked and maligned for everything that it had done right. And then I was very proud of the way that the county did things in the primary. Now, obviously, it wasn't a perfect election here in 2020, but overall, I'm very proud of the county, first of all, for all of the great things that it did to make sure that 1.6 million people voted, but also to take responsibility when things didn't go well and to provide people the opportunity to express their displeasure and to let us know when they were adversely affected by any bad experience that they had voting. And for all of us, it's unacceptable. For me, it's unacceptable. If one person's upset, then I'm upset. And so, of course, what I pledge to do is to make sure that we have a top-down review of all procedures and policies, as we should always do, even if everything goes right. You should always constantly evaluate and go over and see things and see how they can be done better the next time. And then secondly, one thing that's been a revelation for me is the animal shelters here in Maricopa County. I realized how passionate people here are about the animals. We have a very large county. We're the fourth largest county in Maricopa County. I mean, fourth largest county in the country. But every single day we get emails of people from concerns for animals. But I want to make sure that what we do for the animal shelters, we do it the right way, not a reactionary way. But when I met with people on this campaign, speaking of elections, I talked about five issues that were importance to me, and I want to talk about how we addressed it since the year that I've been here. One, economic development. I'm proud that Chairman Gates led the largest property tax cut in Maricopa County history, and I want to thank him for his leadership. And I want to thank Bill Gates' leadership on not only that, but his entire tenure as chairman. Two, water. When I came on as a District 2 supervisor, I was bombarded by several hundred emails regarding the Rio Verde water situation. I'm sure many of you heard about that. The Rio Verde water situation had been festering for years, almost a decade. And within eight months, thanks to Garth and Jen Prokorsky and everyone else here at the county, I believe that we arrived at what I consider to be a good solution, the best solution. And I met people up in February, 300 people angry, and encountered a community divided. And I said to them, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to talk to you about what we need to talk about and what we need to hear. And not all of you are going to be happy, not all of you are going to be satisfied, but we're going to get a solution because you deserve that. And that's exactly what's going on in Rio Verde right now. We're almost there. I would say we're at the one yard line, but it's taken a variety of people and local government to make sure it happens. And not just the supervisor in Maricopa County. It's the Corporation Commission, which opened up a docket. It's EPCOR, the private water company. And now the Scottsdale City Council, which even has been looking at it and reviewing it last night. But I'm very proud of the solution that I proposed. And I do think it's the best outcome for Rio Verde and for Scottsdale. Uh, in terms of housing, that's an issue that's especially important for me because it's something that I brought to the council, to the board when I came on here, when I applied, is that as a land use attorney, I see every single day how the housing situation has affected Maricopa County. How when people have a baby and they're looking for it to move from an apartment to a house and they can't afford it, or their down payment doesn't meet that cost, that is a problem. When people tell me they work at Northrop Grumman and they're making six figures and they can't afford a house, that is a problem. When teachers and nurses have to quit their jobs because they can't afford to buy a place to live near their job, that is a problem. And I want to continue working with the mayors and the council members here to make sure that we address that housing situation. And then public safety. I'm very proud and to have Rachel Mitchell as our county attorney. I knew she was going to win, but I've also been praying for you every single day. Public safety is so important for people here in Maricopa County. It's an issue that I talked about with folks every single day I was out on the campaign trail. And what the Board of Supervisors can do is provide the budgetary support to make sure that Rachel Mitchell and Sheriff Pinzone have everything they need to make sure that all of you and your family and your children and your grandchildren are kept safe. So I'm very grateful to have two more years as Maricopa County Supervisor. I'm grateful that you're all here. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to finally thank the most important person in my life, my wife, Anna. Anna has lived every single day with what we have had to deal with. From the day I told her I got the appointment to figure out how we schedule things, she's a woman with accomplishments in her own right, and she's a woman who provides me moral strength and guidance every single day. And we have a son that we adore more than anything. And every single night, the three of us gather as a family and say our prayers, and our prayers are two things, to be grateful for God keeping us safe that day and to keep all our loved ones safe the day after and the day after that. We just want our son to be a good boy, to live in a beautiful place like Maricopa County, and that's why I'm serving for Anna and my son. Thank you. Have a good one.